Yo, what is going on guys? This is Swerve here and welcome back to another Jurassic World Evolution video. Before I get into this video, if you haven't yet done so, make sure to smash that red subscribe button as we get into some amazing Return to Jurassic Park DLC content. So recently, you guys know that um, we had the exclusive gameplay and uh, in that exclusive gameplay, it pretty much gave away all of it, I'm not gonna lie, like we can pretty much sum up exactly what we're going to have to do uh, for the gameplay or for the game itself and the DLC and um, yeah so with that I've actually gone through multiple videos and I feel like Best in Slots video which is courtesy of his besides one screenshot which will probably be the second screenshot, um, these are screenshots from his uh, video allowing me to sort of show you guys every single bit of research we're gonna have um, for this DLC. So as you guys know it's gonna be very similar to how we have Clear Sanctuary, we're not gonna have everything unlocked as soon as we go into it. It like we did for Dr. Wu. It's a basically a new campaign. So how you load in Claire's Sanctuary, you basically go into it and there should be like a Claire's Sank playthrough and you can click on that and you can then um, play on that one. So that's how it plays out and that's exactly how it's going to play out for Return to Jurassic Park as well. And uh, we won't have everything unlocked, unlucky, sadly enough. <laughs> and uh, there's a specific amount of dinosaurs as we'll get into it right now. So as you can see on screen, we have a gorgeous look at the Comsignathus, um, but also you get to see other dinosaurs that are going to be part of the DLC. Now, I didn't really get the best screenshot here, so I decided to get one from um, uh, James uh, best Game of Beaver. There we go, <laughs> Game of Beaver's um, video. And uh, as you can see here, we have a look at the Tyrannodon. So the two new dinosaurs that we currently know are confirmed. Frontier, where's my Segisaurus? I want my Segisaurus, please. <laughs> um, as you can see, we have the Pteranodon and we have the Comsignathus. Admittedly, I think this one's, a, I don't know why this one's a bit too brighter than this one. I don't know, but uh, yeah, so Pteranodon, look, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, and six dinosaurs in total. So that's why I wanted to show you that, um, just so you guys know exactly what those six dinosaurs are, or that we are going to have those six dinosaurs. But I can confirm what those six dinosaurs are on screen. So this one at the top where my mouse is, the Metriocanthosaurus. This this one right here is the Oplocephalus. This one right here is the Tyrannodon, as you can see. This one is the Comsignathus. This one is the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And this one is the Velociraptor. So those are the dinosaurs we'll have fossil access to. And those are the only dinosaurs we'll have fossil access to. So anybody who did not get the DLCs, uh, besides the one you get in the Fallen Kingdom update, uh, then you will be only be getting those dinosaurs. Which is a little bit questioning, because um, if you guys haven't, is that word question? Questioning in. Is that word? I don't know. You know what I meant. Um, but in my previous video, I talked about um, all the achievements, and one of them says to have 18 species of dinosaurs on the island, and you have to take a photo of it. So people who have purchased this, this DLC but don't have the other DLCs, technically, I don't think we'll be able to do it. I don't know. I haven't really done the maths on what type of dinosaur could be there, um, but technically, they might not be able to do it. But uh, yeah, so moving on, this gorgeous uh, deluxe pack dinosaur here, um, we've seen in other gameplays, which is the Styracosaurus. Moving on to the Carnivore DLC pack down here, you have the Proceratosaurus and the Herrerasaurus right here. And then in the Herbivore pack, it's just the Dryosaurus. And in the Fallen Kingdom update DLC uh, is the Baryonyx. So it's nice to see that they've pretty much stayed tuned stay tuned to the dinosaurs that are on the island at the time. We know all of these six dinosaurs from the fossil access were a thing. We know Styracosaurus was, uh, I think, in the novels. I think so. I can't remember, but I'm a bit iffy on that one. But we know Proceratosaurus was there. We know Herrerasaurus was there. Admittedly, it should be true, Don. But... Segisaurus. Where is my Segisaurus? <laughs> um, and then Dryosaurus, uh, I think, was in a novel as well, unless that's Hypsilophodon, one of those two. But Baryonyx was also on the island. So they purposely picked out these dinosaurs um, to choose which one you can have. Um, but yeah, so those are all the dinosaurs that we can get in this DLC. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different when we go on to Isosauna because we know Brachiosaurus is a thing. We know Parasaurolophus is a thing. We know Triceratops is a thing. But they are not here. So I, the only assumption I have is uh, the fact that um, you have these fully unlocked anyway. You can breed them anyway. Um, I don't really know. It's the same with Stegosaurus as well. I, I, I don't know. We know these dinosaurs are there, but... There's no fossil access for them, so we'll have to wait and see how that works out. Um, so moving on to another set of research, which we are going to be talking about cosmetic genes. So all of the cosmetics are pretty much the same, and you can see down here we have the new Raptor DLC skin pack here. Um, so that's exciting news, but if you've already got a DLC, you've already seen it before. But the three new skin types that we are going to get, if you guys are questioning if there's something here, there's nothing there, don't worry about it. I just thought you might think that as well. Um, but um, yeah, so 1993. 
three variants. Provides access to multiple cosmetic genes. Splicing genes from this category will create dinosaurs whose philo philosophy... Okay, you know what I meant. <laughs> Matches the 1993 era. Why, why can't I say that? Philosophy... Philo phys physiology. Wow, why did I... Oh my god, I'm sorry. Right. That's embarrassing. Move on. Forget that. Forget that. Can be applied to Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus. Wow. Okay. Relax, Swerve. Relax. Brachiosaurus. Triceratops. Variants unlocked can be applied to Brachiosaurus. Tri Tyrannosaurus Rex. So I'm a little bit confused by that because why isn't Triceratops there? Why isn't T Rex there? You know, can be applied to variants unlocked. You know, I just, I just don't, <laughs> I don't get it, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, so you unlock it and he's a new blood mission five. Um, so, 1993 variant, obviously, it's quite nice. Now, all the, di all the dinosaurs aren't there, and apparently they played a month-old um, sort of, let's say, beta build of it. And, um, yeah, so it's, it, everything's probably changed. I'm hoping for a new Gallimimus model. Make him a little bit skinnier, make him more agile. Don't make him look like chunky beans with big wrinkles down their chest. I want I want a Gelly Mimes to look like the one from the movie. They, oh, I'm excited for that if that happens. Um, but yeah, so that's the 1993 variant. But you can pretty much see a pattern going on, as you can see, 1997 variant cosmetic genes. Provides access to multiple cosmetic genes. Spicing genes from this category will create dinosaurs whose physiology <laughs> matches the 1997 era. Can be applied to Stegosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Velociraptor. Variations unlocked can be applied to Stegosaurus. Oh, okay, I get it. Okay, I think what it means by variations unlocked is different types of Stegosaurus. You know, so um, I've been on about this for some time that we think breeding was going to be in the game, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but uh, we saw com two completely different looking Stegosaurs, completely different looking Stegosaurs. And um, I thought there was aging, breeding, something, and loads of people thought the same thing uh, because they look completely different. What I assume these variants do is that you have different 1997 variants. So you have... I think um, Gaming Beaver was on about this, but I think that's down to skin. I don't know if it's different like model types, but he said that there's, um, let's say, Tyrannosaurus Rex skin, 1997 skin A and the 1997 skin B uh, for the male and female. I don't know if this is going to be model changes as well, because as you can see, it can be applied to Stegosaurus. Well, we have a 1997 uh, variant Stegosaurus and A and then a 1997 variant B Stegosaurus. That's what could happen. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but that's what I'm predicting. But yeah, so 1997. Um, and as you can see, a few more um, sort of dinosaurs should be added to that roster. So moving on, as you can see, it's following the pattern. 2001 variants. My birth year. <laughs> 2001 is very special because that was the year I was born. <laughs> um, but provides access to multiple cosmetic genes, spicy genes. From this category, we'll create dinosaurs whose physiology, I almost butchered it there, uh, matches the 2001 era. Can be applied to Ankylosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Velociraptor. And variations can be applied to Parasaurolophus. I want to see Spinosaurus there. I know the Spinosaurus skin is pretty much reminiscent of from the movie, but maybe just a little bit of a change. Make the skins more vibrant, more oomph, you know, just out there. You know, just make it make it look good. Instead of just bland, you know, with that blue skin um, Velociraptor we got recently, I just think it's too bland. If I were to be honest, I wish there was a bigger contrast in the blue to the uh, sort of grey colour that um, is the base skin. I wish there was a, big, a bigger contrast there, but sadly, I don't think that's the case. Um, but it's nice to see Ankylosaurus as a roster there. I'll probably do a roster recap in every single dinosaur that's going to be in this DLC. Um, but yeah, so moving on from these skin variations. A little bit of research now. We're going to be talking about attractions. Now, forgive me because I can't remember what this suitcase attraction is. If you're watching this, give me the timestamp of 8.53 um, and let me know what exactly this um, attraction is here because I can't remember. I think it's just something to do with cost. I don't quite know. Um, but yeah, so binoculars are now a thing. So as uh, described, um, if you have a monorail uh, going across your park and you li list on the uh, viewing tab, you can see that um, there's sort of like a ring around it, a radius, and uh, that's the view radius for guests in the monorail. And you have the same thing here for the Jeep tour. However, you can now have binoculars to expand it, so make it even further. So that's obviously f taken from JPOG as well, uh, where we have binoculars on um, the tall sort of tower and makes guests be able to see dinosaurs from a further range. And we can obviously do that on the tour uh, vehicle. It's a shame that we see these tour vehicles rather than the actual Ford Explorer we've seen. Um, we don't know what it's going to be used for. My guess is that this is just 
so that we can't see it in game until it's released something like that um, or it could just be a decoration because we, obviously we've seen decorations um, such as the toilet um, but yeah so moving on cameras unlock camera mode whilst we'll ride in tour, park tour basically it um, obviously he's the new blower you've got to work with John Hammond to get to that range and cost sixty thousand dollars not really much to talk about it's the same for gyrospheres to get the cameras in it and the Jurassic tours it, it's the same really um, but again moving on um, drivable park tours very similar to what we have in Claire Sanctuary um, where we have uh, drivable truck tours I think yeah and uh, we have to unlock it that way so we have drivable park tours so we can drive it ourselves um, so it's interesting to see because these are basically ranger vehicles so it, I don't know if there's any point going for this because you can just drive your ranger vehicle through I guess I guess that's how it works. I don't know, but um, you can pretty much just do that because they look the same at the moment. Um, so clearly, this must have more purpose behind it. <clears throat> Ford Explorer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so moving on again, pretty cool addition. Um, night vision viewing attractions. Unlock night vision that can be used when riding the park tour. So we know that um, when uh, Tim was uh, messing around in the Jeep, he found some night vision goggles. So I think that's where they're taking it from and allows our trucks to sort of see yeah, the dinosaurs at night. So the visibility doesn't go down that badly. Or maybe if you don't have it, the visibility does go down. So that's pretty questionable. Moving on, onto our fences. All three types of fences, electrified cable fence, fences, you know, not much to talk about there. Uh, light cable fence, again, access to light cable fence provides basic defense against escapes. Um, so basically the first one's electrified and then the second one, yeah, so the first one's electrified, this one's just a standard, and then the big boy we've seen from Jurassic Park 3, um, heavy cable fence. Um, access to heavy cable fence provides strong defense against escapes, and as you can, as you can see, it unlocks very, very late. So you got to go far into the campaign um, to get that from um, John Hammond. But uh, yeah, so we want to look at that. $6,000 again. And uh, yeah, so moving on to, I believe, our final image. Now, breeding countermeasure. We have been described that there is no such thing as breeding in uh, Jurassic World Evolution and there will not be in this new update or DLC, which is very heartbreaking, especially for 1993 DLC. However, how I think that this breeding countermeasure will play out, I was speaking to a fan last night, he explained to me this and he was like, oh, okay, so that kind of makes sense. And I was like, you know what it actually does? So what we have to do for our seven missions, we have to, I think it's the first two are on Isla Nublar and then we move on to Isla Sauna, do three missions there and then we move back to Isla Nublar and complete the last two missions. So it's uh, Nublar, Sauna, Nublar. So what I assume um, for this breeding countermeasure is that you unlock it by finishing mission two, but then at the end of mission two, you're transferred over to Isla Sauna and you have this breeding countermeasure. Now, obviously, it might play into a fact where um, all of these sort of dinosaurs are breeding on Isla, um, I don't know, Isla Sauna, that's the word. Uh, I'm gonna, I just spotted something, I'm gonna zoom in quickly. Um, but yeah, so let's say we go into um, Isla Sauna. I was seeing if that's the Jurassic Park 3. Uh, Brachiosaurus, but it's not. Um, we go into Isla Sauna, and there's loads and loads of Triceratops. They're multiplying everywhere. There's so many of them, and um, we like there's no multiplication or anything like that. It's not like mitosis or anything that you've been studying in biology. Um, it's just because there's loads of things there. And the first mission you have to do um, on um, Isla Sauna is very similar to what you have to do in Claire's Sanctuary, where you have to medicate. So as you can see, this is under a darted medical treatment. So what we had to do in Claire's Sanctuary, if you're not aware, we had to medicate the dinosaurs from the volcanic disease that they are getting. Um, so very similarly, I think we are going to have to use this as medication with quotation marks. Um, just so uh, these dinosaurs don't breed but they're never going to breed anyway you know so that's how it's going to happen or it could be a fact that these dinosaurs are actually on Isla Nublar and when we come back from our recent uh, so we're on Isla Nublar we have let's say four triceratops we go to Isla Sauna finish those missions we come back we end up having nine extra triceratopses or um, you're just that way it's shown that they are technically breeding, but breeding off screen. And uh, you have to shoot them with this dart darted medical treatment to stop this um, 
breeding happening so to keep it under control so that's my theory of how this sort of a breeding countermeasure is going to um, take place um, but yeah so that's my best theory and there's no theories out there who's like oh what's the point oh they're upset um, which is understandable to be fair um, no sedgy taurus <laughs> and now no breeding but we have a, a sort of like troll breeding countermeasure thing but I think that's how it's going to play out um, so we leave Isla Nubla go to sauna come back and then our dinosaurs multiplied on Isla Nubla we have to shoot them with this or we go to Isla Sauna our first mission is to tranquilize or tranquilize or medicate um, all of these dinosaurs on Isla Sauna as we have word that they are um, breeding well way too many times so then we have to as you see we unlock this at mission two and then uh, we have to uh, buy it and then we have to go around shooting them on Isa sauna to stop it but in actual fact they're never going to actually breed like I think that's how it's going to work. I don't know. We'll have to wait until we get more information on that. But I think that's how it's going to work. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash that like button. That's pretty much it for all the research, or it's, let's say brand new research, we are going to get in uh, Jurassic World Evolution's new DLC, Return to Jurassic Park, releasing December 10th on PS4, Xbox One, and Steam PC. Um, so stay tuned for uh, content on that on my channel. Uh, exactly on December 10th, you'll have content uh, for you guys so uh hope you guys stay tuned for that but anyway hope you guys have enjoyed obviously like if you like the video let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below and if you haven't yet done so as a little reminder make sure to smash that red subscribe button but anyway hope you guys have enjoyed obviously like comment and subscribe hope you guys had a wonderful day it's been swerve and peace out